Each session has a high and a low. Stay tuned traders, we're gonna talk about that next. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Thursday, we've had some huge moves this week on the pound pairs as well as gold. Just for everybody who's inquired about the replay for the Pepperstone webinar that, that was on last week, I've got the link below. A uh, ton of great feedback from a lot of people. Thank you for the comments and again, thank you for hitting the like button. If you haven't done so, turn on your notifications. That will alert you when a new video comes out. And again, my mission here is to help traders develop discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset, get consistent and profitable targeting high probability trade setups that you can scale up in size. So just to re reiterate, this is for general information. This is, this is how I approach the markets, how each person approaches the markets and trades the markets. They need to use their own discretion to suit their own best interest. But what I'm sharing here with everybody on my daily videos is how I approach the market each and every day all the tricks and traps that are going to occur with traders in live time so if you want to go back and look for some kind of system uh, you know algorithmic system that's going to guarantee you some kind of forward testing result this is the wrong channel what i'm giving you is the nuts and bolts of what happens in the live market day to day around specific times of day in relation to highs and lows of the day, highs and lows of the session, and the, and the average movements of the instruments that I trade. So just coming back to clarifying, I'd mentioned last few videos, I've really been just more focused on three pairs in the last few weeks, specifically the pound USD, the pound Aussie dollar, and gold. And the reason why that is is that for the most part, the bulk of my trades were coming from the pound Oz, pound USD, and the pound New Zealand, but I found that the spreads, the six and seven and eight pip fluctuations, sometimes for certain timings and, and trade setups, was a little bit more than what I was comfortable with in terms of the consistency of, again, targeting scalable trade setups. So again, if you're taking a position on and you wanna increase size, that six, seven, and eight pip spread starts to become an issue. But I've been studying gold for three, four months now, timings, the spread fluctuations, the movement in each Asia, London, and New York session. And I have to say that these three are now definitely my staple trading uh, instruments. That may change, but for now, I am definitely only focusing on these three charts. And the reason again is that my consistency and hit rate with these pairs, not only for 50 pips a day, but in some days, 50 pips a session has been really fantastic and I like what I'm starting to see on a regular basis with these three instruments. Today we're gonna to be talking about each session has a high and a low. I'm gonna to try to answer some questions. One of the questions I keep getting is, do you redraw the highs and lows every hour? Do you redraw the highs and lows for each session? Do you redraw the highs and lows as the day start progresses? It's really simple. I want to convey something. Everything that I do is really simple because if it's really simple, I can go back the next session and do the exact same thing. I'm not looking to complicate trading. I do not like being in the market. I want to be able to look for the best setup on certain pairs. I want to put a one bar stop in. I want to target 50 pips or more depending on how that trade setup is. And, and as I mentioned before, master taking 25 to 50 pips out of a trade setup on a regular basis. And again, if you can do that and get consistent and work out your own little challenges and nuances, you can scale those trade setups in size. Coming back to a question somebody asked me last week, why don't you just take 10 five pip trades? Number one, I don't wanna be sitting at the screen. I wanna to go to the screen around that 12 candle window, look for the best setup, take a trade, put a one bar stop in, my profit target in place, and walk away. Come back on a time factor, 45 minutes to an hour to either move my stop to break even or already be out of the market, hopefully, if I'm either stopped out or with profit. 
I'm not interested in sitting at the screen and trying to risk 12 and 13 pips to make five. That's not my ideal setup. I'm looking for asymmetrical risk reward. If you do the math, you can hit 50% of those trades and get stopped out on the other half and still be up quite a large amount. Now again, I think the hit rate, if you master this, is very high and it's also extremely profitable if you can get that consistency and slowly scale that up in size, making sure that you're not doing other things to sabotage your results. So one of the big things I, I really had to work on with myself was taking 50 pips and walking away and then coming back for the next session. If you take 50 pips out of the market, don't give it back. You end up getting back or you get overconfident, you get elated, you start taking other trades that are outside of your trading plan and then all of a sudden you're giving money back and you're trying to get back to the high water mark and you end up finishing the day in the red instead of in the black when you were up 50 pips or 100 pips or 75 pips or whatever that may be. So again, coming back to bulletproofing your mindset for success, understanding what it is exactly that you're trying to do with your trading. I talk about this in the seven step daily routine for high performance traders. If you haven't done so, go to my blog, download it, it's a free audio file. Bulletproof yourself through the daily disciplines. The little micro time slots in your day turn into bigger time slots. And those little daily habits and daily routines and daily practices with your trading turn into bigger positives or negatives. So if you're doing things that are sabotaging and you're repeating that process, you're gonna repeat the same cycle over and over again. But if you're doing things that are gonna be moving you in a direction of constant progress, not only in your trading, but in your personal life, you're gonna grow and that growth mindset's what's gonna create and it help you achieve future bigger goals. So each session has a high and a low. So I talk about yesterday's high, yesterday's low. We've talked about the three day cycles, we talked about day zero, narrow range days, but each day when we go to the screen, we're reading the screen from the right hand side. We know we've got yesterday's high and yesterday's low, but we also have session highs and lows. Now, as the previous day may have traded, we have Asia's high and low, they may have went down and put a low of the day in place in London, broke through that and went up into the New York session and put a high of the day and a low of the day for that session in place. The next day, when Asia opens up and the rollover time, the first thing I always ask myself is where is the money? Number one thing that I'm always asking myself is where is the money? Because the whole name of the game is about making money. So people have asked me about commitments of traders reports. Uh, they've asked me about Fibonacci retracements. They've asked me about all kinds of stuff. I'm looking at the high and the low the most recent high and low, it's a box. I talked about this in the last video. Price is always in a box. And we can, as we progress, we're gonna get down to some very specific trade setups, even on shorter time frames in relation to the opens of the market. But this box is where the money is. And as the next day sets up, we may be in a smaller box heading into the open, but it's always about hitting stops. And when we talk about this, as the session begins, we're either inside of the box or we're on the outside. If we're on the outside, that market may be continuing still to either put in a, a high of the day or a low of the day by continuing to expand that range. But if we're inside as the session timings begin, they've either already locked in that high or locked in that low with an engulfment and a pin hammer, or we're getting the pin hammer into the session open for the move back either to hit the stops at the high or the low or to continue the move back inside perhaps as we sell you with a London session we could be jamming them in down low for the quick fast move back up through the high and in New York we could be working the high for the move back down so there could still be 25 to 50 pips up if it's a trend day they may continue to move this up but if they're hitting the stops and then 
engulfing and pulling back, we could see a 50 pip move down. In this particular case, we've Asia's consolidated. They put a low of the day in place in London and gone up and put a high of the day in place before going into consolidation. As the new day unfolds, we now have that previous day's high as a pot potential target for money. And we've talked about the three things that markets do. They break out, they pull back, and they trend. Okay? They break out. We can see a breakout, pullback, false break reversal, going back to get the money down here. And this box, wherever we see a box, that clustered volume, okay, if the market went down low in London and they're trapping volume down there, trapped volume builds up contracts, and when they hit those stops, that's money. And that money goes from one bank account to the other. And for traders who hold on to losers or they're trying to short this, they're trying to sell it back down to the low all the way up, and they sit there and they hold on to it and they blow their trading account out. These are the sort of things you need to be paying attention to, which is why when I get into a trade, I'm looking for a one bar stop, one ATR stop, and I'm looking for pin hammers and engulfments to either be going long, going short, or going back up to the high or going back down to the low if that trade setup is setting up for a continuation or a stop hunt. So for example, in Asia, we may get a, a pin hammer at the high of the London session for a 25 to 50 pip move down, even though they're jamming it in and putting a low of the day in place for a move back up. Market makers trade in both directions, so can we. But again, with every situation, we want to be targeting asymmetrical risk reward. Trade management, I go to break even. Once a market clears through a quarter level or a previous high and low, so again, if the market breaks through a rectangular box and clears a high or a low, I'm at break even. And typically that will be in a 25 pip box. As we go from quarter to quarter, I'm moving my stop to break even. The second quarter, if I'm in a 50 pip move, it'll hit my profit target. If I'm in a measured move coming off of a range off the low or off the high for a move back down, then I'll be making sure that I lock in at least 50 pips. So each session has a high and a low. We have our high and our low of the day, but as we head into the next session, these levels then become significant. And why is that? Because that's where there's money. So. As people ask, wh where do you put your high and low? You should be able to identify those levels on the charts because that's the level where most retail traders will be placing stops. If the market goes down, there's a swing high in place, either at the beginning of the session, the end of Asia, whatever that may be, where retail traders will place their stop when they're shorting the market. And another Example of a 33 setup, when we get these three swings into a low, those are levels where traders are placing stops, which is why we see these explosive moves go straight up through because it hits the stops and they don't come back. Why? Because if they go back, they're allowing losing traders who have now got money out of their account as a loss to go back in there if they're holding on to either get out at break even with a small loss or possibly even a small profit depending on where they got into that trade. Coming back to simple steps, I look for structure. Structure is where we may have a range in Asia that could, it could be a descending triangle, a larger geometrical structure, 25 to 50 pips, which again extrapolated can become a measured move. So if we break out of a 25 to 50 pip range, if it's 25, I'm targeting two times that, that's a 50 pip profit target outside of that range. If it's a 50 pip box at the high of the week or the low of the week, in a rectangle, we could be targeting a 150 pip move. Those are the sorts of things that give me bigger asymmetrical risk reward outside of a 50 pip range. And again, coming back to the box, if we're at the high of the week or the low of the week, today's Thursday, we're day four, we might be up high, but also I'm, all, I'm cognizant that if we're in a trend, if we're in a breakout continuation, that we can still be in a measured move with the trend as well. Not Fibonacci, none of that. 
100% expansions of ranges when they break out. Simple. High and low times two. High of the day, low of the day, again, that's the previous day's box. If we get up to the high or down to the low and the market's working into it and not going anywhere and it, and it engulfs and locks it in, the next session could see us just retest that before reversing. Now we have a middle structure for a larger rectangular reversal. M and W on a bigger time frame. Timings. That 12 candle window is for me, critical. And again, most of my screen time is down to about two hours per session. So that's when they are going to move the market. And we're gonna look at some examples of this week where we saw some fantastic first bar entries into the session for stop hunts back to the highs and to the lows for 50 pip moves. So again, one bar stop, asymmetrical risk reward, when the market is going to move to hit stops, it does it fast, which is why we see the one, two, three, because traders again over six, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours are trapped inside of a 25 pit box and they're getting filled inside because they're chasing candles in both directions. And then all of a sudden when the timings window kicks in, it moves super fast in a lot of cases because they're moving to hit stops where the trap volume is. And then we either see a reversal or, or a continuation move for a trend trade. So coming back to some simple concepts, my approach is not about trying to chase pips and chase the moves. That is a rep, for me that was a recipe for disaster. I'm looking at coming to the screen, looking for very specific setups at certain times that I can position myself in the market clearly and very obviously with a one bar stop, with a 50 pip target, come back 45 minutes, if it hasn't hit my target, has it, has it moved as it should, am I stopped out, or can I go to break even? Those are the three options, and in my case, uh, again, I'm down to some very simple, simple, simple trade setups, and they're not hidden, pin hammer, engulfments, high and low of the session or the day. So one ATR stop, you know, I'm not getting into commitments of traders. I'm not reading, you know, I don't get in front of the news. If there's a news announcement that's a high, high impact news, I give it the 15 minutes to close. If I'm, if I'm not in the market, I wait for that candle to close and then I start going back to work to see where's the high, where's the low, what did they do with the news candle? You know, is there an opportunity here? If not, then I look at the other pairs. Each one of these pairs moves. They move pretty much every session. Aside from Asia for the pound, these two move in every session. The pound definitely in London and New York, and the odd time it does move in Asia, but typically these two move in Asia. They move in London, they move in New York. Gold trades in all three sessions, but the pound, mainly London and New York. We, we, we can get a day after a day zero, especially where it may take off right away in Asia, consolidate and continue that move in the London, New York session. So each session has a high and a low, but think simple. Where is the money? Where are the stops? Where would you put your stop? If you're not in the market, where would you put your stop if you were in Asia and you shorted the market? So if you have a stop in place and then in London they go down and they start working the low and there's a buy signal, where are they going to? They're going to hit the stops. And if you've been trading these long enough, you know that you've held on to trades, you've been stopped out of break even or with a loss, you've been up pips, you've not taken any profit off, you've been, you've been hit and you can't figure out why. Every session they go and get the money, learn to take a profit, take money off the table. Once you've locked it in, come back later. I love when they move it in the first hour and I'm out of the market and I know there's other trades, there's 100 pip moves, I don't care. I'll come back later. There's going to be another trade in the next session. If you can get consistent and profitable with scalable high probability trading setups, meaning that if you can replicate those over and over again and keep increasing size, your risk reward is, you know, two, three, four times your risk on a trade, that's a recipe for success. So let's take a look at some of the trade setups from this week. Again, thank you for all the questions and the feedback. Again, I've just whittled these down, and that said, I still look at the other pairs 
on my daily charts because when the daily charts are set up properly and those still show day zeros if we get a day zero on the pound Swiss pound yen uh, pound Canadian I'll still look at those for trade setups but again the main reason is that I've got the tighter spreads and just in terms of just simplifying these three pairs now especially with gold have been responsible for 90% of my more than 90% of my trades they're pretty much almost 100% of all my trades so again I'm just looking at tighter spreads frequency of trade setups and uh, how consistent they've been and it's been it's been good so let's take a look at some charts thank you for the questions again I keep it simple so a lot of these other questions I'm getting about stuff I don't even look at I have no idea I, I this is it this is what I look at high and low of the day the timings engulfments and pin hammers 50 pit boxes in terms of the numbers it's not quarters theory or anything else it's just numbers but they move in 50 pit boxes round numbers 50s and zeros the quarter levels typically can be stop hunt areas and then they lock in one level and they move it to the next 50 pit box keep it simple traders Keep getting better, 1% better every single day. Master your trade setups. Have a great trading session, and may the markets go with you. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Just continuing our discussion on every session has a high and a low. Just again expanding on our discussion regarding the box and the highs and lows. But most importantly, uh, understanding the concept of where is the money. The market is always going back to get the money. And just looking at the pound, we'll just go through the last few days. We'll look at gold. We'll look at the pound Aussie. Keeping things really simple. Again, I, I talk about just, I want to come to the screen. I want to look for some simple setups. And again, I want to target asymmetrical risk reward. I want to be able to go to break even, uh, let the trade go to its fruition. I'm going to I'm gonna get some trades right. I'm going to get some trades where... They might not move as well, or they're going to move further. They're going to be, met, you know, 150 pip moves, and I might get 50, but I don't really care. Learn from every trade. If you're getting a lot of winning trades, learn maybe how you can get more out of a winning trade. If you're getting a lot of losers, step back, stop trading, and look at some simple concepts. Focus on executing one really good trade setup at a time. Quit doing things that are potentially sabotaging you. But just stick to basics, and, and if you have a basic, simple model, you can come back and do the same thing in the next session or the next day or whatever that is. So keep it simple. Focus on the highest probability trade setups. And for me, again, that timing window is about are they going after the money somewhere? So the first question I always say to myself is where is the money? What did the last session do? Where is the money? And we look at just a Monday on the pound we can see the U.S. session high, so somebody shorted the market. And right away in Asia, they've gone up and just tapped it. They haven't really gone through and hit stops that might be outside of that range, but they've gone up to the top of, of what we did call the box. And in the rollover, this gap down is the same as a bear candle. They've come back, so they've put a peak formation in. So this would be the lower box. We talked about this the other day. They then proceeded in the second three-hour window to work into the bottom of the day. So we had a pin bar low at Asia. They've come down and worked the low twice before engulfing it, just as we head into our Europe-London 12-candle window. I talk about engulfments and pin hammers. Well, we have our engulfment off the low of the day, and in the third candle of our 12-candle window, we have a pin hammer. So I'm not at the low of the day, but I'm at the low of the next session, and we're going after the money. My thesis is that they're going after the money, which is to hit the stops. So you lock in a trade. If you were to take a trade in this area, again, you're in the low of the, the Europe-London session. You don't know this, but at the current time of these three bars, you are inside of a already existing move off the low of the day. So they've already initiated that move. They've gone into consolidation. They've hit the stops on the low of the Asian three-hour window high-low. So if they hit the low of the day and give a trade setup, the next logical spot is that they're going to head to the high of the day. The next candle breaks through the high of the day. Once that level is broken, sorry, the U.S. session high, the stop goes to break even for me because once they violate a higher low, that market 
has the potential now to reverse and go back to the other side. They break out. I'm at break even. The market continues again. The thesis being they're going to go to the high of the previous day. Not necessarily to break out, but potentially to hit stops, trigger breakout orders, take hit take profit orders that are existing up there. Uh, again, there'll be a basket of orders sitting up here for all numbers of reasons. But in this particular case, we have a one bar stop, 50 pip uh, target or whatever that may be, whatever the traders decide, we're in a 50 pip box. The thesis is then that potentially could move to the double zeros because we're in the next 50 pip box. But with a 50 pip target, the market moves one, two, three quickly through. This is now a breakout, a, a, a false break typically does not break through like this. And in terms of the timings now, we've spent the London hour above, uh, aside from the first candle, the London hour is now above the uh, previous day's high, which means that if that last bear candle, which is the last bar of the 15-minute chart, if that high that day is broken, there's a the high the high of that bar is broken there's a high probability they will continue to the upper portion of that 50 pip box and the reason being is that that london hour now sets the high and the low in the equities hour for potentially that the uh, low of the europe session was was the session low but if they break that high the london hour is not done building the high of the day yet they're not done building the high of the box They've broken through the box, and they're making new highs. But again, that 50 pip target was hit. It's a one bar stop, a pin hammer, session open after the engulfment off the low of the day. 50 pip move. We head into the next 12 candle window. We have a high of the day from the London session. They've come back inside. So again, I, as soon as I'm done, I'm walking away. I don't want to give money back. And I know that in the next 12 candle window, there's going to be an opportunity. Now, for me, the biggest issue is more about timing of that U.S. Session 12 candle window because I like to see something in the first hour, two hours. I don't like to stay up too late. I go to bed. But for North, North American traders that, that I've talked with, this is prime time. And in a large majority of cases, the New York reversal is a very lucrative time to be trading. So we have our high of the day. They come back up in the in the seven o'clock stop hunt and hit the stops so they again hit the high of the day we've we've we're at the double zero top of the box there's the an example of the quarter level extending out above as a stop hunt zone above a double zero box but they come back down so again we got a one two three we get an engulfment with a pin now this is a three bar reversal not necessarily something all traders are going to take, but again, an example of where the market went back down and hit stops on traders who chase that move in the gap time. But just a great example of when it was pinned and it re how fast it reversed, trapping all of these shorts in the market. Why, if that market level is broken, if traders are on that screen in live time, they need to be moving their stop to break even as soon as that level is broke. So some traders have asked, um, do you wait for closed candles, all that stuff. When I hit a high or a low, I'll move my stop to break even if I've shorted the market up at the high of the day. Now, I don't consider this to be an ideal trade setup. And the reason being is that we're in an upward market. All this is is a pullback on a second hit to the high. So again, we're, we're in a Monday. The market's been long. We got a peak formation. They hit it once. They've gone up a second time. There's a bear pin hammer now at the end of our equities hour. So they bring it down in that first hour, trapping traders short, trap and stop hunt all in one. We keep talking about that first hour will often be a trap and a stop hunt. So they come back. They've already hit the stops in the 7 o'clock hour. They come back down and hit stops on traders that are long. They hit the stops on the high of the day. And this fast, aggressive move back to the high is often on a third push to the high. Somebody asked me, can you do a video on three pushes? Three pushes are everywhere. You'll always have three pushes. Three pushes down in Asia to end the move. Three pushes up in the London, New York window to end the move. Pin hammer at the high of the day. At the end of the equities hour. Last candle again of the uh, middle hour. Pin hammer. 
and then an example of pinning into the traders who have the trade right before engulfing a one, two, three. So we have three pushes into the pin hammer, one push, two pushes, and a one, two, three engulfment. And now we should see a measured move of this geometry minimum of that peak formation low and the third engulfment down to that lower 200 pip box. If you're down in here and you got your 50 pips again, I just take my trade, I put my target in, I put 50 pip target in, and when the market breaks this low, I'm at break even. So again, peak formation low in that three push pattern back, and then the next target is the pin, and again, just for uh, simplicity and learning, that pin should become a flip zone. So again, they may and they eventually hit that for a measured move of that pin bar down on the bottom side. So a pin will often become a flip zone. So they've done a measured move of that same distance down again. Uh, no fibs, nothing, just 100% expansions. It's really simple. But again, timing window. So this timings, we're looking for an engulfment or pin hammer. Pin hammer at the high of the day back into the trend, they pin up into that move, trader sits through that through an hour of heat, they come back again, one, two, three, and this is a great example of shaking traders out of the market who are in the right trade, which is why often in a trade setup like this, if I am at the high of the day and I'm in a U.S. session and I, and I am in this trade, I will put my target and my stop in place and I'll walk away from the screen. I don't want to sit through this this can be stressful, uh, but again, sometimes when you're in a really good trade, they'll do things, especially when it's a counter trend trade, to try and shake you out of the move. We come back, we start our drawing board all over again. They put a high of the day in place right on the rollover, and of course we have a low of the day from the uh, closing of the market. We're not quite at the previous day's low, uh, which was down at the low of the week so far but again just an example of where they come up in the equities hour in Asia to hit the high and then go back down to the low so a, an example also of where you may have if you were short in Asia expecting a measured move this is the pound so again I don't expect the, I don't look at the pound in Asia uh, but pound Aussie pound uh, sorry the gold absolutely they both trade very well in Asia but the market comes down so we have our high and our low they've expanded the range a touch we head into our 12 candle window so the first question we ask is where are the stops where's the money first hour they go up one two sideways three inside and they break out of the box and and uh, hit stops that are on the bottom so traders that have gone long if they've had stops in place they're stopped out trader possibly who's held on to this trade for whatever 25 50 pips as we get down in the London hour second candle again of the equities hour you're going to see this same two bar setup we saw it last week on a couple of occasions second candle London hour 25 pips down 25 pip quarter level below the Asian range the Asian range was around 50 a 25 pip box below that second candle pin hammer for the 50 pip move back up through the high of the day to the 25 pip increment level above the median price. So we've talked about this in previous videos. The problem with chasing all these swings is that you're getting caught inside and then bang, they hit the stops. So golden rule, let them hit the stops. Watch price go into consolidation. What time is it? Is there an opportunity now to be buying low? People say, well, you're, you're counter trending a breakout move. It has to do with the timings and the candle formation at the high and low of the day. So if you're not comfortable taking this trade, don't take it. But this is a textbook setup. We've seen this time and time again. Um, taking traders, chasing the move, first candle of London, second candle buy low at the quarter level. It's a one bar stop. If you're, if you're wrong, your stop on this, on this chart is uh, 11 pips with your spread. You're, you're, Risking 11, targeting 50. That's 4 to 1 plus. So you get stopped out. They come down to another quarter. They might give you another consolidation and a move back up. So you lost 11 pips. You're targeting maybe 75 now or 100. 
You're at the bottom of a double zero box. So this is ideal though, but this has to do with timings. London open, second candle, down low. There's your high and low of the London range, these two bars. So when they come back up and they take out the high of the London candle and they go into consolidation, you're expecting now a measured move of at least one full expansion of this high and low on a micro level. Those two candles form the initial balance. And again, we've talked about this with market profile. They've expanded the profile. And again, they went sideways the rest of the day uh, in that 50 pip box. But they go down one, two, three and give a pin bar little bull candle at the low of that first swing low from London. So again, we're in a sideways 50 pip box. They go down one, two, three engulfment with a reverse bull pin sideways doji inside bar. Bang, and you're back inside of the box. So we, we're in the box. We keep talking about the box. We're in the box. They stop on up into traders who are short. Uh, for a 50 pip from high to low move back up to the top. So we get up here, one, two, three. They haven't hit the high of the day. You're waiting for a 50 pip profit target. They go into consolidation. They give the inside bear candle. I'm out of the trade because this should have broke through the high or at least hit the stops. After four candles, I've talked about being, if you're up 40 pips and they spend more than 30 minutes at that level and you're at numbers, I'm taking the trade. I'm, I'm out of the market because the first thing they're probably going to be doing is coming back to get the guy who's in the money. So very simple. I'm looking for something, you know, reasonably quick in that first couple of hours or after they've come outside of the range and hit the stops. Once they've hit the stops, I'm looking for a reason to be in the market. And so again, just to reiterate, the day zero, the narrow range day, right? They've engulfed the bottom, they've engulfed the top. They hit the stops one more time, but the price action stays inside of that tight 50 pip box on a Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, high percentage of the time uh, are a high or a low for the week in terms of one of the extremes. They go into consolidation, they break through the high, they trigger the high in the extended Asian hour. This is a dead giveaway. Oh, we're missing something here with our high sessions. We'll just fix that. This is a dead giveaway as we head into the next day if you're not in an Asia. And again, we had a micro uh, W structure on the rollover. That gap candle is a bear candle. We had a bull pin in the rollover. They go into consolidation. Asia right off the bat is a continuation of that move. They continue to work the high. They trigger breakout traders. We get an engulfment on the doji first candle of the 12 candle window for a measured move 50 pips right off the bat. So again, we, if we're in that type of day where it's a strong trending day after a day zero, then I'm biased for the long trade all day long. And again, we head into the Asian session. The last candle as we head into the 12 candle window of that 7 o'clock hour, we have again an extended W formation where we've got three pushes into the high and they continue it with the bull hammer right into the first candle of the U.S. session. So that's an always in day. Double distribution, always in day. Uh, we had a day zero on Tuesday. Wednesday is an all in long day. And as I mentioned, when you get days like these, they don't come back. So traders who try to short these markets, counter trending these markets get smashed all day long. And if you have ever been in those trades, uh, again, the day zero, when you, as soon as you see a market moving early in Asia, you need to be aware that if you're going to counter trend that, you're going to potentially get hit hard. So, but again, yesterday, I mean, right off the bat, all three sessions, bull hammer, bull hammer, bull hammer, three trades, three 50 pip moves. Uh, sorry, Asia, not 50 pips. Actually, Asia did move 50 pips if they stayed in that, but one bar stop for traders who were long in Asia right off the bat. Uh, they've targeted almost 200 pips off of that little one bar, you know, was itself was seven, seven pips. So even if you have a 15 pip stop, and again, this trade showed no heat on any one of those entries. So this is the sort of stuff you want to look for, you know, one bar stop, beginning of the session and understanding the golden rule. Where's the money? Well, if they're going back to get the money on the U.S. guy, first things first, Okay, but we had a day zero. But even if you weren't aware of that, if they're going up, uh, you're either going to be, you know, looking at them going to the 25 pip box. You take 25 pips off. 
whatever, but the market, if you're in this for the breakout trade, and again, in the next session, now you're talking measured move. The beginning of London, if you're up high and you're in a long trade, the first thing that you're, you're thinking about is measured move. So the next first target that you would expect to go towards is that expansion, second expansion of that range, which again takes us to the middle of that 50 pip box. The U.S. session takes us through the third uh, expansion, the second full expansion, sorry, and then into that second half of the U.S. 12 candle window, we push up towards the third expansion before going into consolidation just below that 3150 level. So coming back to something simple, I'm looking for simple stuff. If it's complicated, I'm not going to trade it because complicated means you can't duplicate your decision making. The next time you might be thinking different, you might be reading price action different, uh, I'm looking to keep things really simple. I want to. I want simple trade setups that I can recognize in live time, that I can take a one bar stop and be targeting asymmetrical risk reward. So just having a look at gold. Uh, gold has had some fantastic moves this week. I'm, I'm you know, I'm uh, a bit biased right now at the moment. I like trading the gold. I'm finding it to be very uh, consistent in terms of its behavior. And again, I'm just, you know, taking it one trade at a time, but it's had some very good moves and it moves 50 pips uh, at a time a lot quicker than than the currencies. But again, uh, just monitoring little things that I need to be aware of in terms of timings again, uh, but just some great examples of the 12 candle window uh, for continuation moves, for reversals. And again, one bar stops, high and low of the day. We had a beautiful one on Monday, right at the high of the day. After they broke through the previous day's high, we had the continuation move, the blow off, and again, the, the engulfment of the high bull candle after the vertical candle again, the vertical candle and then a pin high. That's endemic of a peak formation reversal pattern. Uh, one bar stop, that market moved down 100 pips. Uh, so... On the way up, we had the bull pin hammer and the gap time heading uh, prior to getting to the 12 candle window. So again, we have a, a situation where it appears that they're putting a peak formation in and traders have shorted this market. But this, the most important question is, is two things. Number one, we broke out of a, if we go back and look at this, okay, they put a high of the day in place on Friday. They put a low of the day in place and went into consolidation. They worked the low in the rollover. They came down into the pre-market. They came down in the Asian session, and they reversed it. That's a peak formation low off the previous day's low. They've hit the blue tracer, triggered breakout orders. We know there's stops sitting above the previous day's high. The market, all this is at this stage, when the market opens, is a new high of the day. We, If you short this, you're just shorting a breakout. All that is now is a peak formation, but they come back a second time and hit it and engulf it and give a little bear candle. But we're in a very strong day zero. This is a day zero Asian box, right? Same pattern as what we just looked at on the pound, just within a session. Whip them up high, whip them down low, jam them in and pull away. That rectangle now becomes our geometry for a measured move. We're outside of the second full expansion when the London market opens. We get the engulfment and, again, timings. Second candle of the third hour. The London high is in place. They go through the high. They're not done putting a high in yet. They're still going higher. They pull back. They consolidate at the numbers with a bull candle. Then we get the bull hammer, and they continue that move, which, again, traders, just looking at the blue tracer, you're looking at 25 pips to the blue tracer. If they hit stops, you can hypothesize they're going to go to at least 50. So when they clear or break through that blue tracer, we'd be going to break even. That's the previous day's high. And remember, they've already hit the previous day's low. So there are stops sitting up there for longer time frame traders, end of day traders. Uh, they could be stop loss orders from shorter time frames or the U.S. session. doesn't matter. Somebody's shorted the market on Friday. They haven't taken the money off because they're convinced this is going down even further. They hit their stops. It's about the money. They go back and get the money. And the first thing they do, again, look at this whole level up. 
This is all now trap volume. If this is a reversal, the first thing they're going to do is go after these guys. Because why? Because they're all caught up high. They're all caught up high chasing the move, and they have stops sitting here. And once they go there, they're not coming back. But what they are going to do is put them into even more heat by going back and getting traders who are long off the bottom. And again, if we follow that across, they went right back to get the guy who was long on the bull hammer in the Asian session. But coming back to a couple of other simple things, Monday, Tuesday, if they form our high and our low for the week, and they're coming back down, we could obviously get a peak formation in place on Tuesday as well for our high and our low of the week, which is exactly what they did. So again, this peak formation coming into our Europe London 12 candle window the next day can give us some insight. Are they going to be going back up? So we have a high of the box in Asia. They jammed them in down low before breaking out. We had another high of the swing high of the box from the U.S. session on uh, Tuesday. Uh, sorry, Monday. Which again, they brought traders back inside and jammed them down low. They gave the bull pin hammer down at the double zeros before hitting the stops. So the London session... Uh, not really, again, we're, we're inside of the Asian high and low. So when we see this consolidation inside, we're inside the Asian range. We haven't broken out. They broke out in Asia. They pulled it back inside and went sideways. They broke out in the gap time for a 50 pip move up uh, off the inside of that lower quarter box before working down in one push, two pushes, three pushes, bullpen hammer for the fast 50 pip stop hunt to the high of the day. Yesterday was a uh, again a, an example of the market in Asia early on breaking through the previous day's high in one push, two push, three pushes before going into consolidation. So again, where is the money? Traders shorted it into the U.S. close. Pay attention to how they close the market. They engulf it and they go down and they hit the stops on the swing low. They pull it back inside. They go sideways, they pull it back up inside above the double zeros, they work it down one, two, three, spring candle, one, two, they keep going higher, they've hit stops, they get people shorting it, they hit the stops, they get people shorting it, they hit the stops, and they go into consolidation, they work it down one, two, three. I've said this before, if they go down, you've got to be thinking, we're going up. Partly because, again, where's the money? There's stops up here. They work in it down into the open. We get a bullpen hammer off of 50 for the one, two, three up. So one, two, three up, I'm at break even. Why? Because if you get a one, two, three, that's a, that's a typical stop hunt move. It, and it's only gone to the high. It didn't break through. They come back and they go up one, two, three again. The engulfment traders gets short, but as soon as they get to the low of the London session. So again, an example, the low of the day is over here. And the low of the Asian session is underneath the big bull candle, but the low of the London session is that pin hammer. So the trade can fail there. That is our new redrawn low of the day. As the market opens each session, we can get a redrawn high and a redrawn low. But think simple. Where are the, where's the money? They've come back and hit the stops and stayed inside. They've done their work. They've gone into consolidation. One push, two pushes, three pushes up. And, in, and again, just think timings. All this time, three pushes up, they come down, hit the stops on the guy who's long. A little bull hammer. When? Right before the 12 candle window. They engulf it. You're long. You're long into the open of the U.S. session. Why? Because you have the pin hammer at the low of the day. We have our little micro geometry structure. Immediately, the market breaks the high. We're in long. It breaks the high of our microstructure. We're at break even. Our thesis being that they're going back to hit the stops on traders that are short. One push down, two pushes down, three pushes down within that structure. And sure enough, they go up and hit the high. Market's long, goes into consolidation. False break, pulls back into a trading range. They hit the low again. Bullpen hammer just prior to the 12 candle window with a lower high. Lower high means they're stops. We want that middle structure. They break the high, we're at break even. They continue the move for 50 pips plus from double zero to double zero for a 100 pip move. So, you know, if you're out with 50, it doesn't matter. 
Uh, think simple. Session opens. Where's the money? We come back today. We have a low of our U.S. session. We have our high of the U.S. session. They come down inside again, trap volume, and they go up one, two, three at the beginning of the first hour of the rollover. They come back. They go sideways and engulf it. They break down. Just fix that. They go into consolidation just prior to the 12 candle window. Breakout pullback and a breakout candle. So an example now of a market where the existing sell up top is already in motion. So this means that this is a market that has been sold. It's the sell trade is on. The sell trade is on as the equities opens. And so we have geometry. We've got two geometrical structures. We've got the one from the, end, the close of the session as well as the high of the day. But we also have the geometry of our U.S. session from the previous day and the high of today. So we're looking at approximately a 50 pip box. That market may have a 100 pip move in it. Um, but question being, where's the money? There's money here and there's money here. But they dropped it down and went sideways underneath the peak formation from the first stop hunt. They break out and continue the move. So if you're long on this candle, on the breakout candle, you got your high of the bar. That's a one bar stop. The stops, uh, that, that range of that, that uh, move on that one bar, uh, just for measurement's sake, is 216, 20, 35 pips roughly. So again, an example of where I would put a 20 pip, 20, 25 pip stop in max. The market closed at 179. Your stop could be at double zeros, um, you know, whatever that may take. Or you may you may hold on to this for one candle at 35 pips, and then after the second candle prints, tighten your stop to the high of that bar, meaning that you now move your stop to the, the high of the second bar because, again, in a trade like this, once it's moving hard, the thesis is, is that it should continue to move very quickly to hit the stops because they have this volume now trapped. Everything above this pin in the U.S. session is now all trapped volume. So if this is going to be a fast stop hunt and a fast move in Asia, they're not going to come back. It should go bar after bar until they hit the lows uh, or the profit target, whatever comes first. So keep it simple, traders. Again, I'm looking for something that's simple with the trend uh, in that first hour at the higher the low of the session or at the higher low of the day, but I want to know where's the money because that's where they're going to go. And if you don't, if it's not obvious, don't trade it. Just wait. Uh, I would rather sit and wait. I won't. I won't even be interested in trading unless there's something simple because if it's not simple, then you can't do it again. And if it's each trade setup is complicated, you're never going to be able to get consistent. You're never going to get consistent in terms of duplicating your approach or scaling your trades because every trade is going to be so different with all these variables. Look for simple trade setups, ones that you can scale in size, come to the market at a certain window of time, engulfment, pin hammer, one bar stop, 50 pip target, where's the money? Let them go, let them do the work and when they're right, they move quickly, they don't come back, you're at break even quickly, it hits your profit target reasonably quick if it's a, a fast move um, and there's very little stress. So keep it simple, traders. Stay disciplined. Stay focused. Have a great trading session and may the market Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.